Another interesting biometric sensor that we're going to look at is the pulse sensor. And this makes grabbing your heartbeat really easy. You don't even need a library. So let's take a look at the code on how to hook this up. It's three wires, and I happen to know that it's just another analog read. All the complicated circuitry is back here. And we'll talk a little bit about how to prep this sensor and how it works. First, let's look at the code. If you go to PulseSensor.com, you can find their tutorials and also find their GitHub link, which I've already opened here and downloaded. It has a nice tutorial on how to hook everything up. But I've already gone ahead and done that and unzipped the file here. And if we look inside here, we will see this .ino, Pulse Sensor. That is the file we want to open up. You can put that into your Arduino folder. You can actually leave it on your desktop because it is within a folder already and it should work. Now that the software is open, we can take a quick look here. So there's a pulse pin of zero right here. That's got to be the sensor pin. There's a blink pin, a fade pin, and a fade rate. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. So basically, I've got a positive, negative, and an analog pin here. So what I'm going to do, let's see how we can wire this up. So I'm also going to wire up an LED to pin 13 and an LED to pin 5, and I need some room here. I think the best way to do this is to go ahead and pick a couple rows in the breadboard. Pick these three. Let's take the sensor pin right away and be done with that. Get that into analog zero. We get a bunch more wires here. And let's hook up a couple of LEDs as well. So I'm going to have an LED. We'll do positive in row one, negative in row two. We'll skip a few. I'll do positive in seven, negative in eight. So the positive one, we want to have a jumper. an additional row here. This is a 220 ohm. We'll do the same thing for the positive of this LED to here. And for the negatives, let's go ahead and wire up the negatives to the ground rail. And the negative here to the ground rail. We're going to have a lot of wires going on in this build. And then the positives, let's take from that resistor and put one into pin 13. We know we're going to use that. That seems to be a blink one. And then they have this other one called a fade. So that positive one, fade will be this lower LED, goes to pin 5. And if I look on here, my guess is it's pin 5 because it's a pulse width modulation. I'm able to turn that on and off and get a really nice fade of an LED. Now we just need to get some power to the pulse sensor. So let's run positive over to the positive rail here. And let's run a negative right here to the negative rail. So I've got a negative positive, analog zero. And then I have the positive of each one of the LEDs going to pins 13 and 5. And right here I have the negative going to the ground rail and the other LED negative pin going to the ground rail. So it looks like I need to just hook up my rails here. So let's take the positive and put that into 5 volt. And let's take the negative. Wow, we're really we're running out of wires here. The negative and put that into ground. Hopefully that all makes sense. Basically what I did is I powered the rails, positive and negative, and I've got that analog zero. Make sure everything shows up well on the camera. All right, let's go ahead and upload the code. It's compiling, it's uploading. Everything looks good. A little sensor's on. That's good. Let's open up the serial monitor. Aha, big question mark. So when you see something like that, immediately the first thing I'm going to check is, what's the baud rate? What are we communicating at? This pulse sensor, I bet, is running a little bit faster. So let's scroll down here and up oh, there it is in the setup right here's the void setup 
Here's our pin modes and then serial begin, 115, 200. So if I were to look at 115, 200, does that change anything? Yep, there we go. We're getting some voltages out of there or we're getting some kind of feedback. That wouldn't be voltage, otherwise I've got about 500 volts. So that's the feedback from the sensor. Now we need to attach this sensor. Now there's a few things that you should know about this. Number one, there's open electronics on the back. You don't really want to touch them because your skin is conductive and you'll ground it out. Number two, there's a couple different options here. I'm going to use the Velcro strap that that kit came with. To do this properly, I would, and they suggest on their website, put a big blob of hot glue on there and you could press it against like a ceramic plate or a piece of glass or even a piece of tape and let the hot glue dry. And then when it's done, trim around the excess and that will insulate the back and allow you to use it easier. I'm not sure how I'm gonna use this in the future. So I don't wanna actually insulate the back just yet. So what I'm gonna do is very carefully just wrap this Velcro around my finger. Put it kind of tight. This is just a temporary fix right now. I'm gonna take this sensor and I'm gonna put it underneath the Velcro on my hand. A little tight, let's loosen it up a bit. Starting to see some things happening. Here we go. So that's the blink, and this is the fade. It's actually working really well. 